So, hey, everybody, welcome to Podcasting 101 Part 2, Making an Impact with Fitness Career Mastery, Barianis and Shay Kastabi, as well as Nova, baby Nova. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Thanks, all I'm here. Peter Pollock. I'm the founder and CEO at Struct Club, which is Structure for Music Inspired Fitness. And today we're totally going behind the scenes with the masters of podcasting in the fitness and wellness space. Recently, Fitness Career Mastery celebrated their 200th thousandth download of the Fitness Career Mastery podcast. And one of the things that is so cool about this is within the past year, you celebrated your hundred thousandth, but have mm-hmm. been live with fitness, the Fitness Career Mastery podcast for a couple, two and a half years. And so that yeah. has been accelerating. And I think that kind of brings us to the broader point of, uh, of why a lot of us are here today, which is that podcasting has Good observation. Grown at an accelerated pace over yes. recent years. And uh, you know, the founder and CEO of Spotify called podcasting the next, next phase of growth in audio. Yeah. And so we thought, why not have a, a conversation with people who've been doing it for uh, and creating community around their podcasts for the past couple and a half years to uncover what it takes to start a successful podcast. So I'm going to go ahead and let um, Barry and Shay introduce themselves as wow. well. The Fitness Career Podcast, Fitness Career Mastery Podcast for those who have not yet been acquainted with it. <laughs> that was a fantastic yeah. intro. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, where to begin? <laughs> uh, well, we both have been teaching for over 10 years, yeah. um, each of us. Um, my journey has taken me all over the world. We were just talking about yoga certifications. Uh, one of those took me all the way to India. I studied yoga in India for a while, and then I moved to Dubai. I lived in Dubai for four years and helped to build the fitness industry there. It's now really exploding, which is awesome to see. And it's, it was so cool to be a part of that. I helped open one of the first well, the first international flywheel studio there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with flywheel, but they're an indoor cycling. And, sure. and oh, they had to lay off like 98% of their yeah. employees because of COVID. Yeah, it's been sad to see. They, they like pulled all the way out of LA yeah. too. Uh, but that's where we both got our start and uh, have grown since then. Um, I've lived back in LA and then over in, in China as well. That's actually where I started the Fitness Career Mastery podcast. And uh, um, Shay came on later. I'll let her like bring the story together with her, or with, yeah. with her side. But I, I started the podcast uh, because I was training instructors there in China at the time. And uh, I noticed that a lot of the things that I would present um, that I took for so, granted, yeah. trivial, yeah. Uh, people would like, make me stop and repeat and they'd be scribbling down notes. Blown. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, this is crazy. I, I can't believe this isn't more widely known or taught. So I realized that I, I felt an obligation to pay all of that forward. Mm-hmm. So I started the podcast just as a resource for fitness professionals and in the industry. And kind of as a hobby, right? Yeah. To yeah, just occupy for fun. some of his time while he's living <laughs> in China with- yeah no idea that it would grow into what it is today. Absolutely right? not. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I've been consistently surprised with how little information we as fitness professionals receive once we kind of go out into the world to start our career. We get yeah. our certification um, in whatever modality we teach or we get our, our, our PT um, certification, yeah. right? But um, that, that in general teaches us what to do and what not to do. And what not to do, but not how to build a business around that. Or in the case of like those of us that teach group fitness, like how to put a class together or how to deliver an incredible experience around all of those components that we learned in our certification. So we focus on a lot of that. Um, yeah, that's our specialty, I think, yeah. is everything that we do, whatever topics we discuss, always come back to how do you create an exceptional experience? Experience for your clients? How do you build trust? Um, that's whether it's marketing, sales, coaching, and queuing, um, playlist, playlisting, <laughs> uh, your pa- pricing, your packages. Like it doesn't really matter. It all comes back to how do we serve the community? How do we make them feel like VIPs? How do we, how do we with the hu- other human beings? Yeah. How do we change their lives? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then 
your side yeah, no, of the story. I've, I've been teaching and consulting and training for many, many years. I mean, I, I started, I've been a teacher my whole life. I started teaching dance at 13. So when I moved into the fitness industry, it was very, very easy for me. So my career just accelerated very quickly. I started creating programming for companies. And then I started, um, then I was the East Coast regional manager for Flywheel for a time and a master trainer there. And then when in New York, when I moved to Los Angeles, I decided that I wanted to do it on my own. I had been working um, independently with some other products and brands um, and um, doing programming and small consulting jobs for other small boutique studios. And I thought, okay, I think I can really do this. And my first job took me to China, um, working for a massive company, actually took me to Taiwan first. And then, then my role was to help them expand into China. And that's, I brought Barry on for that job and she left She didn't want to there. live there. Yeah. yeah. So. They wanted someone to like relocate. Yeah. She's like, I know somebody. So we've been working <laughs> together for a really long time. And when Barry started the podcast, I thought, oh man, I've always wanted to start a podcast, but I don't have the bandwidth. I have all these products and services, but I don't really have a community or a way to showcase I don't know, those products. To showcase those products. Like everything was word of mouth and I was so busy and I, I wanted to create more impact that way. So when I came on as a guest and that was like a hit, that's one of our most successful episodes we'll talk about later. Hmm. Um, we decided to team up and I was like, okay, you have this amazing podcast. It's an incredible resource, it's an incredible lead generator, but you don't have a business and you're not selling anything. Like <laughs> people need stuff. I yeah. have stuff. I'll give you the stuff. Let's, because I was getting clients internationally yeah. from the podcast. So that's how we came together. And um, I had another business called The Local Skill. We decided to merge them as Fitness Career Mastery. So that's yeah. Fitness Career Mastery is a podcast, but it's also um, uh, like a consulting, co we also do consulting, coaching, peer mentorship. Um, we write programs for studios. Online courses. Online courses, yeah. So we have- All for fitness professionals. Yeah. yeah. And since all of that happened, we've also come together in a bigger way. And we made this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surprise. <laughs> so well, that's I ha oh my gosh. There are so many questions and follow up. One of the biggest things that drives people to, has driven people to these conversations in podcasting 101. And one of the reasons that we kicked it off is a few um, problems or issues that you mentioned with the starting up process. And, and one being, uh, and, and you have probably seen this so often with all of the fitness professionals that you interact with, but how easy it is to discount our own stories or think that, you know, take kind of our own normal and our own lives for granted. So, yeah. and wondering, you know, is, is what I really have to say that valuable to- Oh my God, people? absolutely. So how yeah, did, we, was it very, was it that intuitive for you or how did, how did you make that jump taking the step into or, or defining what was valuable and, and, you know, what wasn't and just making, making that initial jump. This is really a question for Barry because he started the podcast on his own, but I just want to say that, you know, I, the podcasts that I enjoy the most are the ones where people share their stories, you know, and somebody yeah. is helping facilitate that, whether you're listening to personal stories from the, by the host, or they're inviting other people on to listen to their stories. I love um, going to and listening to creative mornings, you know, at the topic could be on anything, photography, travel, stuff I don't know about. And I just, it's, it's, you know, crocheting, it opens up your eyes and I think it's inspired. Yeah, crocheting. crocheting cat pot holders. <laughs> yeah. I think it opens up your eyes. You go, wow, if that person can do it, then I can do it too. And, um, that just, I, I have a background in, in theater and dance and acting. So as a performer, you're always, my whole life I've been sharing other people's stories and those that inspires people. It changes their lives. It gets them to think creatively. It gets mm. them to look outside themselves. And what I've realized from making the transition from being a stage performer who plays a character that's not me, right? And now transitioning to somebody that I, I just have to share my stories. I can't put on like a wig and a <laughs> jacket and be somebody else <laughs> is that's even more powerful because it's, it's real and it's happening now. And um, absolutely, our best episodes are, are always the ones where either we get on and we're talking and we're sharing stories as a means to deliver information um, or we have an expert on who is just so 
passionate and so present and um, really tapped into their own, their own value, their worth, their experience that they just talk. And, um, and those are the ones that, that do the best. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up because the story is really powerful. Yeah. It's just ingrained in our DNA yeah. as human beings. It's something that we immediately attach to all the time. We'll talk more about that later in this, I'm sure, but I can completely relate to this feeling when I moved back to LA from Dubai, oh. I kind of like started everything again. You know what I'm going to talk yeah. about. <laughs> but <Okay>. uh, <laughs> I, I was like really excited to be, the re one of the big reasons I moved back was because I wanted to be in a bigger industry. Barry was on every billboard in Dubai. When I showed up there I to train it. him to teach <laughs> and he... His face was everywhere. He was a model. He was in every magazine. He was the top instructor at Flywheel. His classes were sold out, triple wait list. And um, while that's really exciting, Dubai is a small, I'm going to speak for you now. Dubai is a really small community. And, you know, through becoming friends with Barry at the time, he was like, I'm really craving a challenge. I am a really big fish in a small pond here. And I would like to be a small, a small fish or a medium sized fish <laughs> yeah. in a bigger pond. Yeah. So, so that, that's exactly what yeah. I experienced High when, expectations I, when I got coming back to Los Angeles. Yeah. So I found myself in a position where I, I'm, I'm this yoga cycling instructor international admit uh, amidst like thousands of other cycling and yoga instructors and they all <laughs> in Los Angeles Wanna are very talented, mm -hmm. very attractive, very fit. And I'm like, how do I stand out from all of these people? And at the time I thought, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a YouTube channel. And I started like looking at other YouTube videos out there and seeing what people were doing. And I said, okay, now I know what to do. And I, I started creating my own yoga content, not knowing that I made the biggest mistake in like looking out to everybody else and doing to, what they were doing and trying to do what they were doing and find a creative way to distinguish myself from, from them. When I now know that what I should have done was just take a big step back. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. If I had gotten in touch with my story at the time and what I'm really passionate about and allowed that to come out in those YouTube videos, then I'm sure I would have found a lot more success. And that's like, ultimately- Remember when you were doing the whiteboard videos because everybody was doing whiteboard videos and they were terrible. Go Google <laughs> on YouTube. I deleted them all because oh, they're terrible. <laughs> Shoot, that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll put one back up again just um, for history's sake. So. <laughs> but uh, that's ultimately what I did do with the podcast. I created it because I was passionate about giving back to this niche community. And because I just focused on that, it, it's grown into what it is today. So that is really huge looking inward and it just, it could, especially in the fitness industry um, and especially with the proliferation of social media, it can be really easy to compare yourself to other people when absolutely really can be more touched and you can make more of an impact by just being yourself and looking yes. yeah. inside and, and, and highlighting that. And that's something that we've learned, not just on the podcast, but through our online courses, through social media content. You know, you look out, you go, oh, this other person or this other brand is like us. They're kind of doing the same thing, but they're crazy successful. We should do that. And we've done it a hundred times. Oh, the, the, the way they do their graphics on social, we should do that. And then it, it bombs because it's not authentic. Right. Or the way that people build online programs. This was, we actually would get into arguments about it. I'm like, I, I don't want to do it the way that person did. And Barry's like, but it's so successful. And I'm like, but it doesn't feel right. So we tried, we actually tried and we're like, no. And we had to can the, our first recording of our online course. We threw it in the trash and we went back to the beginning and did it all over again. Yeah. Waste of time, waste of money. But, and then we had to Good learn the hard experience. way, yeah. you know, take inspiration from other people. You know, if we're talking about podcasting, listen to other podcasters, um, and and One take of our notes quotes on quotes is steal like an artist, right? Yes. Well, yeah. Amateurs copy. 
professionals steal. There's a difference. So an amateur will just copy what somebody else is doing. Oh, I can get out tracing paper and I'm going to make this Picasso and I'm going to put it on my wall where a professional will take that and go, I'm going to steal that idea and I'm going to add in something else here. And now all of a sudden it's something completely it's completely new. Like Robert Greene in his book, Mastery, one of the things that he says, one of the roads to mastery is taking two seemingly unrelated things and putting them together and creating your own path, creating your own niche. And that's what you have to do. Okay. Um, I'm in fitness. Uh, and you look at like what Barry said, there's all these other people, they're super fit, they're super skilled, they're good at this. What's something else that you can bring to the table? It, could be simple, like maybe you're really funny, so you're just bringing a sense of humor, or you're really mm -hmm. wacky or left of center. Maybe well, a lot of the time, that's what we're afraid to show people, right? Yeah. Maybe you have a background in finance, so then you can zero in and like, okay, you don't have Love to do that. a podcast about getting a six pack or, or a keto. <laughs> yeah, a keto podcast. Please don't do another keto <laughs> podcast. Um, you know, you can give financial advice to people in the fitness industry, or maybe you have a background in law. We know people like this in our community, right, Amira? There's Shannon Weinstein, who is a fitness professional and a CPA. There's Danielle Stead, who is um, a lawyer and a fitness professional and now a business coach. And they're carving out these really unique pathways and building their careers. This is what we do. This is what we coach people on. Yeah. Um, because they're taking two things that feel separate and they're putting them together and now there's like this explosion. So that would be my number one tip as, as we move forward through this is as you're thinking about it, you know, don't just do another podcast on nutrition or another podcast on weight training. How can you bring some color to it, some life? How can you put a lens on it that is uniquely your own from your point of view right. and from your life experience? That is what makes you special and is going to attract your audience especially if there's 20 other podcasts out there on the same topic. You're going to find your tribe. They'll be drawn to you because of your story and your life experience. They're like, oh, that resonates with me. I've been through that before. Yeah. Or I just like their, I like the way they approach things or the way they think about things. That's how I think about it too. And if you're thinking, well, I, there is nothing special about me. There is. <laughs> there absolutely is. We have resources to help you hone in on Listen what to that our is. persona development podcast. Episode yeah. four is one of our most popular. Put yourself, there's a free worksheet. We'll talk about the uh, free downloads. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Episode four, Fitness Career Mastery. Go through the persona development um, worksheet, and then you'll really get specific on on who you are and what it is that makes you tick. And then maybe you'll get an idea out of that that will help you launch your big idea. Yeah. No, we have so much to cover, but that's something that's super important. So yeah. we wanted to make sure we spent some time on that. So on episodes, I'm really curious now about what have been, in, in retrospect, those top one to three maybe episodes why were they so successful? What was the feedback that you got? And um, how did you come to the ideas for those episodes? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> let me unpack it slowly. Uh, I think that the answer to this really stems off of what we were just talking about. I think the most popular episodes have been with the guests that have been so passionate about their particular topic that they were speaking on. Yeah. You know, um, we had um, an amazing episode with Emma Barry, mm. uh, who was the director of Equinox for a time and when, was one of the founding uh, members of uh, Les, Mills. Uh, Les Mills. And is now, I mean, she's everywhere. Yeah. She speaks and presents at conferences all over the world. Right. And um, Dr. John Berardi, who is uh, one of the founders of Precision Nutrition, came onto our show and he was just like extremely passionate about brain building. Uh, exa actually, exactly what we were just talking about. So um, you could go listen to his episodes as well, uh, other than episode four. But um, he's been spending years and years and years working with fitness professionals on this topic. So when he came in, like every point he made was like, a bomb was dropped and uh, yeah. everything really hit home. And those were the best conversations uh, when, where you find a way to match your passion with someone else who's passionate about um, something that's complementary yeah. and you bring that together. I think 
if you're having guests on the show, right? So if you're not speaking yourself and you're inviting other people, which right. is what we do, we do a little bit of both. Um, but primarily it's about inviting somebody who's an expert in their field onto our show to share their, their experience and their expertise. They, um, they don't have to be super famous, but if they're well known, that helps. Mm -hmm. Um, and they just, they need to be really tapped into what they're doing and they need to be able to speak about it fluidly, like very easily and almost casually. Because again, the best episodes are the ones that sound like a conversation where stories are being shared versus this is step one and this is step two, right? Like those are great too, but they're not as popular as the ones where they're sharing a piece of themselves and they're inspiring the listeners um, so that they can pay that forward. Right. And then I think having chemistry with the person that you're interviewing in or the person you're, you're um, on the mic with is really, really important. So we always do a pre-interview phone call, 20 to 30 minutes, where we can sort of gauge their yeah, energy and their personality. <laughs> because some guests need a lot of hand holding. Like you've got to write out the bullet points and come up with the questions and keep them really focused and direct them like really like take them by the yeah, hand step by step and other people are like you just turn the mic on and they just fly and magically you hit all the bullet points that you had been planning to talk about and it just fluidly flows through this yeah conversation. so that's um that's a suggestion i would say if you're going to have guests on is make sure that you connect with them prior to the interview off of email like either in real life or on the phone or through a video chat um so that you can really figure out how the interview is going to go. The few times that we've had guests on um, where we haven't done that, there's been one or two times where it's been like an absolute train wreck. And then you either have to- yeah, Some of those episodes didn't go live. <laughs> it goes in the trash can or we're doing massive amounts of editing, which is crazy time consuming. Right. And you don't want to spend all your time on that. You want to be able to just record and put it out. This should be something that's there should be a low barrier to entry here and it should be, you, you know, it should be really easy for you Yeah, and help support your business, not take time away from the other things that you're doing. Right. Right. So these are a few really fascinating and, and helpful tips behind the scenes that you don't hear about these successful podcasters talk about in teeing up each episode to be successful. Are there yeah. other if that's your number one tip, are there, are there tips two, three, a handful of things? Yeah, I would say also if, um, if you're just doing the podcast yourself, like you're coming on every week and you're sharing your own knowledge and your format isn't really about having a guest, you need to do the same thing with yourself. Interview yourself the same way that you would another person. Decide what you're, get really focused on what you want to talk about and then you know, how much do you know about this? Do you have to do additional research, right? Do you need to, um, do you need to line up your talking points so that you stay on task? Do you need to write a script for yourself? Or is this something mm -hmm. that you can just riff on very easily? And they might be different every week. Maybe sometimes you're like, I really need some structure around this or else I'm going to go on too many tangents. And other weeks you might be like, I got this. I'm just going to hit, hit record. And these are all, you know, I feel like we've kind of had to learn th just through trial and error and intuition. But again, as somebody who uh, went to school for performing, <laughs> whether it's on camera, on stage, or on a mic, these are things that I've learned. Like I paid a lot of money to learn. So you have to, you have to know yourself. Like, are you somebody who can improv or are you somebody that needs a script? You've Which got a mic in front a of you. More. And that's okay. Yeah. Like I, I don't need a script. I can basically just talk. Barry needs a little bit of structure. So when we work together, when you hear the two of us on the podcast, it's a combination of making sure that we have an outline and then leaving room for there to be some improv moments. Yeah. Some freedom yeah. and like where the stories come out. Yeah. And another thing that comes to mind uh, for, for this question is uh, knowing your audience yes. really well. You have to know who you're speaking to very, very clearly down to very intricate details like um, what do they eat in the morning? What do they wear? What's yeah. their life like? How many kids do they have? Um, what do they struggle with? Uh, and that takes time to really establish before you get started. When I started Fitness Career Mastery, I knew it was for 
group fitness professionals primarily and their studio owners. And um, being one of those myself, I, I understood the struggles that they went through. But over time, something that we've done is we've continually surveyed our audience and we'll talk about how to build your audience a little bit later so you can set yourself up to do something like that. But we know exactly what it is that they struggle with. So we know exactly what they want to hear when uh, we think about putting episodes out. So we feel very confident going into the episode and those episodes wind up being very successful yeah. because it's exactly what our audience needs to hear. So if that feels overwhelming right off the bat, there's two things that you can do. One is maybe eliminate all of the people that you don't want to speak to, right? Mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, not that we don't want to speak to them, but if you listen to our episodes, we're not really talking to the personal trainers and the big box gym owners. That doesn't mean they're not invited. That doesn't mean that they can't find value in our episodes. That's just not the avatar that we have in our mind of the person that we're speaking to. So when Barry says, you know, what do they eat for breakfast? What do they look like? You, it helps because you're in, a, you're in a room like this by yourself, right? So it helps to put somebody on the other side that you're that, speaking to that matters to you. So give them a name, give them a life. Maybe it's somebody in your real life, a friend, a colleague, a business owner, or your grandmother, your grandma, <laughs> somebody that you know that needs your help, that needs your service, and you put them on the other side. And when you're speaking into the mic, you're speaking to that person. That yeah. also um, helps your your message really resonate with the person on the other side because it feels like you're speaking directly to them. So be mindful that you're speaking through a microphone into somebody's probably headphones while they're on the treadmill or cooking dinner or something. You're not speaking to a group of people. There's not an audience. It's one individual and eventually hopefully 200,000 individuals, right? You're speaking to all of those people, yeah. <laughs> but one at a time. Um, we always get... a so many great takeaways for ourselves by interviewing our guests on our show. Yeah. And one of those that really stuck with me uh, was a guest who talked about how if we try to speak to everybody, we wind up speaking to nobody. And, and I, I know that that's before. really tempting to do when we put out something like this, because we want to serve everybody, but it just is too noisy. Mm. Um, the more honed in we can get on who we're speaking to, the more people we wind up serving. So the example that he gave was, if you're a personal trainer and you create your website and you put best personal trainer all over your site, when imagine someone's going to Google best personal trainer and what's going to happen? A hundred like, thousand results are going to pop up. It's like and when you go to you New possibly... York and it's like best pizza in New York, yeah. there's like 2,500 of those. Yeah, <laughs> but then he gave the example of, if you really brand yourself as something specific so that so that when someone says best personal trainer post menopause women and you pop up at the top they're going to be like boom that's my person because it's There's very be catered to them yeah way less uh of those trainers than there are best personal trainer yeah so you have to decide who it is that you're speaking to so you've already alluded to what I'm going to ask next and, and starting from that one person, this one person you're talking to and going to 200,000, <laughs> how do you build that audience? How do you build that community? Especially for people who feel like, well, I haven't even started my podcast yet. I'm starting from zero. Yeah. Well, how do you, since we're all in fitness, how do you get your clients to reach their goals? The number one thing they need is consistency. You have to show up every day or every week. Mm -hmm. That's we say that all the time. Um, I hear trainers say it in group fitness classes. I hear them say it on social media. It's like the hardest part is getting here, right? You just have to show up, yeah. at, at, but then you have to do the work when you show up. So, um, you know, do, doing your best, which is honestly something that we struggle with because life is crazy, but I feel people, you know, they start to understand that once you've built up this bank account of trust is, you know, the podcast comes out every Friday, ideally at the same time, yeah. which hasn't happened lately because of this one. But, um, you know, picking a day where you release your podcast and then 
creating the systems and the operations around that. When does the newsletter come out? Um, is there any follow-up? Um, having the Facebook community has been huge for us. So directing people to a place where they can interact, where they can chat. Um, that's another way that we poll our audience. So in order to get into the Facebook group, you have to answer a series of questions. So, and we take all of those and we put them in an Excel spreadsheet and then we put them into buckets. So then we have categories of people and then we, we, we have somebody doing this for us now, which is amazing. Um, you start to link them up. Okay. We've got this many people that have this issue. So not only can we create a podcast episode around it, but we can now create products and services. We can create an online course. We can create a downloadable worksheet or ebook or whatever. Um, so all of those things, you know, you need like this ecosystem. Yeah. You don't want to just like put up a podcast when you feel like it. Um, yes, that that's excellent. Uh, podcasting is such an interesting medium because it's just audio, right? So, um, when people are, are listening, something that's really, really important to do is to direct them somewhere where you can have uh, a deeper interaction yeah. with them. Um, so that means at the end of the episode, directing them to a place where they can sign up for your newsletter or a Facebook group, or uh, maybe there's um, something that they can download. Uh, at yeah. the end of the episode so that you're capturing their email address and that way you can follow up with them. Uh, finding a way for them to step away from the podcast and have some sort of meaningful interaction with you is extremely important for building that community yeah. around the show. And when that happens and you do all the things that Shay just mentioned and continue to provide them with value and things that they really need, then the episodes get shared they start talking about them to other people. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll share resources and it, it starts to grow exponentially from there. Yeah. So as I have a, a couple of questions left and we roll into q and I do want to encourage people to drop any questions that you have and feel welcome to send them privately to me or to everybody in the chat. Sure. I, I wanted to, um, and as folks are doing that, I wanted to ask about, clearly this podcast is embedded in a much broader ecosystem. And, you know, there isn't like, people aren't paying to listen to the podcast. That's, that's a right. that's thing. And, and Shay mentioned that earlier. So can you, can you talk a little bit about the role that the podcast plays in your business and how that has materialized over the past two and a half years? Absolutely. Let me start here. To run a successful business, you have to accomplish three things with your clients, with the people on the other side. They have to know who you are, they have to like who you are, and they have to trust you. Have we heard this before? Know, like, and trust. These are the, the big three, the, the holy trinity of a successful business. So this is exactly where our podcast fits into our ecosystem. It's a free resource, but it's even though it's free and it's not making money towards the business, which is what gives the business life, let's be honest, um, it's extremely valuable because by consuming this free content, which is a very low barrier to entry, they get to know who we are. They're hearing our voices every single week. Uh, they're understanding um, how we're experts in what we do. Uh, hopefully they're getting to like us mm -hmm. as well as we share our personalities and stories yeah. through the show. And they're establishing trust as well because they're hearing us talk about the issues that they uh, are struggling with and giving us uh, solutions to, uh, I just said that, <laughs> finding a way to, um, I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, they're uh, learning that we have the answers to their problems. Or can provide or facilitate the answers to their problems. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so that once that's established, it becomes much easier to make a sale yeah. at that point. So to after they've been listening to a certain number of episodes to say, hey, we've got this online course on exactly what you're struggling with to take you from here to here then it's not a question to them. Right. 
Whereas if you just put out a Facebook ad about this special training program that you have cold to nobody, to tons of people who have no idea who you are, yeah. what you're all about, and if they can trust you, then there's really little chance for success there. So the podcast has been really instrumental. Like Shay said early in the conversation, she's gotten international uh, consulting clients through the podcast just because they've listened yeah. and said, hey, she knows exactly to, what she's talking about and can solve my problem. To be honest, when Barry first started this podcast, oh, this I great. was very concerned. I was like, stop giving this information away for free. This is how I make a living. And I, I very um, sort of narrow-mindedly looked at it as competition for me and other consultants um, in the industry. I thought, oh my gosh, if he gives this free download. And that's something that I charge my clients for. How will I make money? Then when I came on as a guest and I immediately, I've got a client in New Zealand and a client in Paris, two places I had absolutely no, no connections to, <laughs> to before. Um, I was like, oh, wait. And now they have first, they, they've gotten to know me through the podcast. They clearly like me. They clearly trust me. And now um, the money that they spend on working with me can be put to higher use because I don't have to walk them through these simple steps and these foundational things because I've offered them for free on the podcast. And what they really need is accountability right. and integration. Little hand holding. Hand holding. So, in theory, my job becomes much easier and more exciting because now I can take a client from 60 to 100 instead of from zero to 60 and then hope for the best or hope that they re up, right? Now it's like I can show them, like, this is how you win, this is how you make it. And then they're clients for life. There is no second guessing. The next time they need help, it's like, I got to go to Shay. I got to go to Barry. Mm -hmm. So the same thing can, that can be for you as a trainer or an instructor, nutritionist, whatever it is. Now you can, you're providing foundational um, or like the foundation information, foundation information, sure. like baseline information that people need to get started. Yeah. Plus maybe additional tips that you don't have time to really go through in detail when you only have an hour with them and they're paying you a, a premium for that time. Now you can give them more information to help support their journey. And the time that you have with them is like, it is much more powerful, has, has more impact. Yeah. Right. If I were to sum all of this up and give you some advice, all, all of you watching, listening, uh, Think of your podcast as a way to show your listeners how you fit into their life yeah. as their guide. I think that's the best way to really sum all of this up mm -hmm. uh, because that's what people are coming to you for. They, they need a solution to their problem and you need to show them how you fit into their life as the guide to take them from their problem to the solution. Yeah. So we've already, Mary here has broken the ice with, uh, with participant questions. How, yeah, Mary. Far out, how far out do you plan your weekly topics and guest speakers? And some of them are very timely. Yes. So. Well, that's because we're terrible at that. We can't lie. <laughs> so we have tried now. This is again, see, this is a tip. Barry came to me and was like, um, you know, mo or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe I got tired of the weekly podcast. It doesn't matter. We've had discussions about batching, right? We know people that are crazy successful. They do all of their podcast episodes. Like, like six months out. Yeah, six months out. Or they, they only record for two months or three months out of the year. And then they just roll them out. And the rest of the time, they devote to the other elements of their business. We would love, love to be able to do that. We've tried it multiple times. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work uh, with our schedules, with our personalities, with the way that we create. It's just, yeah. it's not going to happen. So um, that being said, we do have some that are backlogged. Yes. So uh, we're able to put those out at any time. So basically what we try to do is we try to do a few over the course of a week or two. So 
um, so that we're like a few weeks ahead of ourselves, ideally. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we record on a Tuesday and the episode comes out on a Friday. Sometimes um, we, ha we have plans to, we have a backlog and we're going to put an episode out and then something like COVID happens and we're like, we have to pivot and this other thing has to come out now. We recorded an episode right before this hit um, with a, a web development team. So we're talking about website design and it just didn't feel right, especially because um, their services are very expensive. So we didn't want to direct people to something. It felt insensitive and they agreed. So I said, please hold off until people are ready for this. We're like, okay, yeah. so that episode will probably come out in a few weeks when it was supposed to come out in March. Um, so sometimes you have to shift. And because of the nature of what we do, I think it's very important that we are very relevant um, most of the time. But then of course, there's always, there are always those evergreen topics. So while, uh, again, sharing our story may or may not help you, I, you need to find the way that you want to work. I think ideally you batch episodes and you plan them out for like a month or two months at minimum because it just relieves a lot of stress. But if you happen to be like us and you can roll with the punches and it just feels good to be creating and it works with your schedule and you have time and you can fit it into your business model, there's nothing wrong with that as long as right. you get it done and you stay consistent and trustworthy <laughs> and um everything we've talked about already. Everything, yeah exactly <laughs> brilliant chantal asked a question that really or a set of questions that really resonates with me i feel intimidated about one trying to stand out from all the podcasts that are already out there Two, the time it will require to plan produce promote a mm -hmm. podcast how much time per week do you devote to your podcast and three since it's written here it'll be easier to break down and answer yeah. one by one but is it yeah the expense to hire a producer to help or start by doing it all on your own okay okay start with how much time it takes you well th uh, that's not an easy question to answer either because um, there's a spectrum as to how much effort you want to put into it so for instance how long do you want your episodes to be there are some podcasters out there who have 15 minute podcasts yep it's really easy to pump that out our episodes are closer to an hour um, and we want a very polished um, production when it comes out. So I'm spending a lot of time editing audio, making sure everybody sounds the best that they can, and then recording an intro and outro at the end of it. Uh, there are some people that just have a pre-recorded intro, put that on, um, and then their intro, they just kind of ad lib at the beginning and um, it's a little little more casual so it, you have to decide what kind of production that you want for yourself right. and I recommend going out and listening to a lot of different podcasts out there and getting inspiration and seeing what really resonates with you like we we're talking and about listen earlier to a few of them and really see if you can get like okay what is their format what are they doing consistently yeah um, because bear I'll I'll tell you Barry is the person that does the editing he puts the podcast together, he uploads it onto our media host. Media I'll break host, all this down. Yeah. And then, um, you know, writes the newsletter. So he does all of that stuff and I'm watching him do three to four hours a week per episode. So that's, At least, yeah. so after the recording, which is an hour, um, listening to it again, editing, writing the show notes, um, doing the newsletter, uh, creating the images that go on Facebook and on social media and the images that we share with the guest. Um, and then what else? That's, that's kind of it. That, that, that's very like, very simple. We're not doing a lot. And that takes like four hours. Um, whereas some other podcasters, it may only take them like an hour to do all of those things. Other right. people, it may take more. So to go into your last question, is it worth the expense to hire a producer to help? Um, not unless you're going to put your podcast behind a paywall or you already have a very like high value product to sell. When you start, I, I feel this way about anything. Like you should have your hands on all of the pieces. You should learn how to do everything. Um, you want to keep your overhead low. If you gain a huge following and you start, um, you know, 
uh, and people are driving, you're driving traffic to whatever it is that you're selling, then yeah, hire a team and outsource some of that so that you can focus on other elements of your business. Yeah. My answer to that's a little different. It depends on what you're really passionate about. Yeah. If you're extremely passionate about producing a podcast, but you're like starting to sweat thinking about how do I edit this thing, yeah. then maybe you do hire a producer. Yeah. There are lots of different services out there that can provide um, episode production and editing, transcripts, um, copywriting, mm -hmm. all, all of that stuff. If that is what's going to help you get over that hurdle mm -hmm. and actually start, then yeah, maybe start there. Yeah, if that's in your budget, then you should do it. Yeah, also know that all of this is extremely, extremely scary right now. I was terrified to start my podcast. I had no idea what I was doing. And I will say that it may take me three or four hours now. It took me six or seven at the beginning because I had to walk myself through every step because I didn't remember all of it. But now I can like pop it into my editing software. I know exactly. I have my pre-recorded intros. I know, um, uh, after a lot of practice, you it becomes much easier to, to write you. the intros yeah. and outros. I know how to tag it. I know how to upload it. I know how to put it onto uh, the the right server so it goes out to um, be distributed to Spotify and iTunes and Google Play. That was very hard to learn at at the beginning. Not like so hard that it's but it's like intimidating, but like anything new. Think about when you first started teaching. So for those of you, we're, we're here because of Struct Club, right? Right. There's a reason you use this tool because it takes you too long to build your playlists and, and write down all your yeah. programming. And you can't go into a class with a notepad. It looks unprofessional. It's messy. You can't read it in the dark, right? So you have to, um, it takes practice, right? What, what used to take you maybe, when I first started teaching, it took me like, a week to make one playlist. Now it takes me 20 minutes. And then you, you might need to reach out and find a tool to help you, you know, streamline so that you can, again, make the most out of, of the time that you spend. It's yeah. the same. It's the same thing. And then Chantal, to go back to your first question, how do you stand out from all the podcasts that are already out there? Like we said earlier, yeah, it's really intimidating to look out and see podcasts that have millions of people listening and wondering how you're going to cut through that noise and stand out to people, but recognize that there is only one Chantal yeah. and only one uh, person with your story, your unique point of view, and that is going to resonate with your people. Yes. Like we said earlier, you don't have to reach everybody. You have to reach your people. And yeah. if you go through the work of figuring out like who you are, what your core values are, and what's important to you, and go through the work of finding out what it is that um, your person at the other end needs and what they're struggling with, then you're going to carve out your own space. Yeah. And you're not even going to look at anyone else who's creating podcasts out there. There are other podcasts on building a career yeah. in fitness out there. We don't look to them for guidance on where to take our business or our Don't podcast because we have our own voice and our own group of people and that is okay. Um, if I can recommend um, some resources that will sort of help inspire you, I would say read the book Blue Ocean Strategy, mm -hmm. which is about, you know, moving into uh, uncharted waters, right? So a red ocean is uh, a, an ocean where, where there's the lots of sharks are feeding, are feeding right? It's all bloody. Everybody's trying to get a piece frenzy. of the same thing. Yeah. You want to go out to like your own clear blue ocean. Um, and then I would also say um, uh, read anything by Austin Kleon. So steal like an artist, which is where we got <laughs> that quote from. Yeah. Um, but his latest, he does an, has another one called Do the Work. And then the latest book, you can read it in 30 minutes. It's called Keep Going. Um, one of the things that, that he one. talks about is just create for the sake of creating. If you want to make a podcast, make the podcast. Don't worry about who's going to tune in or who's going to listen. If it's terrible and it flops or people come back and go, what are you talking about? It Delete it. They're going to forget that they heard it like a week later. 
just start over. Make a horrible podcast and don't put it out. Just record your voice. Yeah. Talk to yourself in the shower. Oh, well, that's a big hurdle to get over, like listening to your own voice all yeah, the time. Record, Everybody hates doing that. <laughs> record like three or four on your own and don't worry about where they go. Just practice talking. Just practice getting into the habit of, you know, coming up with a topic and writing a script and setting this thing up, which takes some time and talking into the microphone. Uh, it's really, really, really important that if, if you want to produce something that you're creating, period, yeah. make a bad workout, throw it in the trash. You need to get into the habit of programming, right? Make a horrible playlist, throw it in the trash. You have to get better at doing it. Yeah. So that's, um, Read that book. It's so inspiring. Um, also, Seth Godin's Tribes is incredible. We need you. You only need like a thousand diehard fans. There's billions of people on this planet. You can find a thousand. It's not that hard yeah. anymore. It doesn't have to be 200,000. It doesn't have to be 2 million. You only need, out of, those, out of all those people that download our episodes, we really only have like a small core group of people right. that are like, we put a product out and it's gone right? That's all we need. If you have a thousand true followers and they each purchase one $100 product from you, you in a year, you're making six dollars. figures, baby. <laughs> and that's, that's a great, it's not easy. It takes time, Yeah, but it's, I feel like that's less daunting when you think about it that way. Yeah. Legit. You guys see, we've got another yeah. question from India. Hi, I just loved my podcast. How long would you Congrats. recommend before? That's like me doing the emoji. Uh, uh -huh. Working on building database right now. I've been focused on content and presentation, but I'm constantly debating about building the tribe. Thanks. Great, build the tribe. great question. One of my favorite podcasters, who I got a lot of inspiration from at the beginning, his name is Pat Flynn. Recommend all of you start listening to him as well. He has a, po a podcast called Smart Passive Income. He talks a lot about how to create a podcast and how to build a business online consistently he says he has one big regret you know what that is not starting from the very beginning at building his email list that is his biggest oh, regret man. over he's making millions of dollars online so i understand your concern you want to focus on building your content your presentation but don't hesitate to start building that email list right now it's the only way that you have um control over the access to who's listening on the other side. It doesn't matter how many Instagram followers you have, how many people you have in your Facebook group. Uh, you don't control that environment. Um, Instagram could crash and, and burn and Facebook um, could change their, 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 their policies. So you don't have access to groups anymore. And then what do you do? So you have to start building that email list from the beginning. And I, I wish that I started building it from the beginning as well. Some of the most successful podcasters out there find a way to build something in, some downloadable worksheet or checklist or, or giveaway that requires people to enter their email address in order to receive. And that way they, they have their email in their, in their database and they can continually reach out to them. So, um, Start providing value and start pulling in those email addresses now. We only have a teeny, a teeny bit of time left, a couple of minutes. Um, takeaways, other things that I, and, and we might've forgotten that you want to make sure that people understand before they leave this Zoom room. I think we covered a yeah. lot of the things that we didn't we wanted really to talk take about away. equipment. We were going to talk about that, yeah. but um, what I would like to say is we're more than happy to help you and coach you through this process. So if you need some handholding yourself, then please reach out to us. We're more than happy to help yeah. you. But um, I know this is something that can be scary. You're really putting yourself out there in a vulnerable new way. Um, but if you do exactly what we coached you to do through this chat today, where you're really clear on who you're speaking to, what your voice is, and um, you find guests that are passionate about their topics and you uh, put in the work to provide something of value so you can collect their email address, you're already going to be really far ahead and you're just going to continue to hone and refine as you go. So stay consistent, mm -hmm. just get started. 
Yeah. <laughs> and know um, who you are. Yeah. Ulti- I mean, anybody who puts themselves on camera in front of a, a mic, you're an influencer, you're a personality, you're also um, a little bit of a, uh, you're, a, you're a teacher, you're a trainer, whatever you are, but you're a performer, right? And in order to do that, you like really, really have to know who you are. You have to know what you're about. And um, I would say before you do anything like that, you need to do that work. So if you haven't done that, even as an instructor, I would say start there. Everything else sort of falls into place once you've done that work. I can tell you, I, I did it with a life coach years ago and it just, my career just accelerated. Um, and that's why the first episode that I did with Barry on the podcast is called um, Developing Your Persona. I, I really believe that everything stems from your core values and knowing very deeply who you are. So you don't have to worry about competition or whether or not everybody's going to like you. Um, and also as a creator, as a producer of anything, it should be fun. It is such hard work mm-hmm. to show up every week, to be consistent, to um, deal with the criticism and the hate mail that comes in every once in a while. <laughs> We've only had like four, but man, I could recite them to you word for word because they sting. Um, you've got to have a tough skin and you've really got to be passionate about what you're doing. So if you get to a point where you're like, I'm just doing this because I need another thing to do or because I think it's what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, set it aside. Maybe you'll come back to it later. But um, at the end of the day, no matter how difficult or challenging it is, it should, it should really fill you up. So you want to, all of the points that we've given, whether it's how often you podcast or whether or not to get a producer, you want to build the systems around you to make sure that you can, (laughs) <laughs> that you can sustain it, right? And that it and that it ultimately serves your greater purpose, which is, you know, the other parts of your business. Right. So this conversation was an absolute gold mine of insights. And I know Yay. I could still continue to ask a million questions too. <laughs> we wish we could keep going. We're um, happy to come on again. Shay had mentioned a, a little bit about equipment. We're going to have show notes afterwards. We'll send everybody who ha- has attended their courting, um, as well as these links. Barry had dropped in how to reach them uh, as far as their email. And it uh, looks like a special episode on the Fitness Career Mastery yeah. platform. That links to Shay's episode four. Oh, yeah. yeah. So maybe what we can do, because um, equipment's also kind of boring. So we can share what we u- We're happy to share what we use with you. And that can be like of a course. jumping off point. But I also think um, that Pat Flynn is a great resource, right? Because that's where you learn oh t- to get our equipment. He has a series of YouTube videos where he breaks down every step. The equipment, uh, media hosts, tagging, yeah. uploading, uh, producing. He takes you every step of the way. That's how I learned. And so I highly recommend checking out that series of YouTube videos. That's going to get you out the gates and running. Yeah. Go to the, to the expert. We're happy to be a resource to you for that. Like we're not, we don't have a podcast on how to podcast. (laughs) We have a podcast on how to create an exceptional experience in group fitness. So um, we're happy to share what we use, but I think go to the man um, and spend a little time there because that's where you're really going to get a lot of those, um, you know, the, yeah. the hard facts on what you actually need to do to get started. I'm, I'm going to search for it right now. Okay. Barry's going to give it to you before we leave. And drop it in the chat box. Brilliant. And we'll also uh, make sure to circulate that around in, in our notes and in our notes after the fact. Um, I do know we're about, ooh, thanks, Barry, three minutes over, but I wanted to thank everybody so much for, sh- for signing up, for showing up, and to Barry and Shay, as well as Nova, baby Nova, who has been a complete champ and well-behaved. Been amazing. Uh, being yeah. fine <laughs> during the whole <laughs> episode. So we'll circulate this out to people afterward, but just wanted to, to say thank you, um, especially to both of our guests, um, Barry and Shay, for just laying down all of the wisdom and lessons learned over this incredible journey and to the next hundred thousand and next million yeah. down to come that's right thank, thank you so you. much amira you know we call our listeners action takers and that's clearly what all of you are so we really appreciate you taking the time to take action and come on and learn something new and we really hope you find success as a result 